Hey, what's up, Big Red Nation? My name is Logan. This is Husker Central. So if you love the Huskers, uh, specifically Husker football like I do, this YouTube channel is just for you. In this video, we're going to be talking about the Big Red preview practice where we as fans got to show up and watch a practice. My son, Micah, and I got the chance to attend. In this video, I'm going to be talking all about the things that I saw. That's coming up right now. All right, so first off, thanks so much for viewing this video. If uh, Again, if you're a Husker fan and you love to talk Husker football, consider subscribing. This is uh, this channel is just all about creating community specifically for the Huskers. So here's what I saw. First and foremost, it was so much fun. The, I was really kind of worried, is it going to be blazing hot? It was hot, but they had us in the shade on that west side, and it was nice. Um, first and foremost, practice, the only way I can describe it is fast and efficient. Like it was really incredible to watch. And up on the big screen, they had, uh, the schedule. And so you could follow along everything they were doing. They had coaches mic'd up. Coach rule was mic'd up. Um, and they were, you know, talking about different things as they were doing it, describing different drills. It was really cool. It, I have been, um, as if you've been watching this channel for some time, you'll know I'm I'm originally from Florida, so I love the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I've been to many OTAs, many of them. And I kind of expected it to be like that. This was way better than any OTA I have ever been to. This was legitimately watching a practice happening in the stadium. You got to see individual drills. You got to see one-on-one -on -one drills. You got to see the stretching. You got to see uh, team uh team play and so they did offense versus defense they did ones versus ones and twos versus twos and it was awesome man it was awesome and so efficiency is the only word that i can use and that also goes for this offense that we're going to see this year and that's because one we saw as uh fans we got to see what it looks like for our quarterbacks to actually have a quarterbacks coach <laughs> and so I was just excited to see what they were running. And so some of the stuff, hold on to your panties here. Some of the stuff that got me excited was just watching plays over the middle that was grimy plays actually happening. Those 10, 15, 20 yard plays across the middle, those crossers, those slants, seeing those things converted, oh, it was music to my soul. Also, seeing little screens out to the flats also get completed and not go over their heads. It was a thing of beauty, man. This offense is going to really do work, and that's because Dylan Riola. I don't know what to say, man. The kid just looks in the spring game. Watching him in the spring game, I got really excited. In this practice, I got more excited. The dude just looks like a kid that just belongs. He doesn't look like he was just playing high school football last year. Through the entire practice, I never once saw him throw an interception. That's another thing that should excite you. There was not a lot of turnovers. I didn't see a single person fumble the ball. Not a receiver, not a running back. Um, I did see Daniel Kalen get the ball stripped. I saw Daniel Kalen throw an interception, maybe two. Um, I'll say this about Daniel Kalen, by the way. Uh, I have it in my notes. He looks like a kid uh, who's young, but has so much promise. I loved watching him work. And there's another quarterback, not named Heinrich, that I'm going to talk about that really should be number two, uh, in, in my opinion. But I'm going to get to him in just a few minutes. But Daniel Kalen, again, there's growth that has to happen. But I'm, I was excited when whenever he committed the first time. Uh, I'm even more excited to see him there. But man, no turnovers. Uh, there, there were some, again, like Daniel Kalen had the ball stripped. He threw an interception. Heinrich Hardberg, I know, threw one, maybe two interceptions. And that was it. I didn't see ever see a receiver. And now they had it split sometimes where they would have uh, one group on one side of the field, another group on the other side, and they were they were running drills. So it's, it's really hard. And the other thing that was really difficult, some guys have changed numbers since the spring game, and that was also confusing because uh, Ja'Cory Barney, has now has number 17, and I believe he was number 87 in the spring game, and so that was confusing. Uh, and Ja'Cory Barney, goodness gracious, man, the kid still is just making plays. Um, Yeah, 
again, efficiency, but I'm going back to Dylan Raiola. Man, he there's just something about the way my 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 youngest son, who is a humongous Husker fan, just kept saying, Dad, D- Dylan Raiola just flicks his wrist and the ball just fires out of there. And it looks so effortless. He also maneuvers in the pocket so well, keeps his eyes downfield. Um, you couldn't, of course, touch the quarterbacks, but you could sack the quarterbacks as far as touch them, they're dead, right? Those types of things. Um, or get close, and they would blow it dead. They had refs out there. Um, another thing, you didn't see a whole lot of penalties. There was I, there was less three or four, maybe. And there was we were they practiced for two and a half hours. Um, offensive line, again, because so many Husker fans just, I, I guess you guys just see the wrong things, or you think because people get in the backfield that that's completely all on the offensive line. Uh, that's just not the case. Quarterbacks, good quarterbacks make you a better offensive line, um, but also tight ends, all and running backs, all those guys play into uh, those types of things. But the offensive line looked good. Ones, twos, and threes. They were moving around, moving the pocket. They running the ball. There's another guy who you don't know about. We didn't get to see in the spring game that opened my eyes, but there was running lanes. I running the ball outside the tackles, up the gut, those types of things. And here's here's the other piece: the defensive line in those in those spots too. Man, they were swarming like crazy. It was just it was so good to see. But I don't. I want to make sure I go through my list of how I saw practice and the things that I saw. So again, Dylan Raiola, he's the guy, man. He. By the way, we we can stop with the. Uh, is it Dylan Raiola? Is it Heinrich Harburg? Dylan Raiola was the only one who took snaps with the ones. Period. Nobody. Heinrich didn't come in and take snaps with the ones. Uh, Daniel Kalen didn't come in and take snaps with the ones. Jalen Gramstad didn't come in. Like nothing. It was only Dylan Raiola. Stop. Dylan had a fade to the back corner of the end zone, end zone to Jamal Banks. Chef's kiss. Money. Money. He did the same thing in the spring game, and he did it two or three times in this, in this practice. Um, Jamal Banks is a freak, is an absolute stud. Talk about a possession go up and get it guy. Dude was made for the Big Ten. I'm excited about that Dylan Raiola, Jamal Banks connection. Uh, Isaiah Nayar, um, another dude who, by the way, I saw that dude up close when it was time for the autograph session. He was a, he is <laughs> he is built like a dude straight out of a freaking lab. Uh, he is fast. He showed that in the spring game. But uh, yeah, so starting the starting lineup was Jamal Banks, Isaiah Nayor, uh, Thomas Fedoni, um, Emmett Johnson, Dylan Raiola, and then you know the starting offensive line. Uh, but man, Dylan Raiola throwing stuff across the middle into tight windows, not into double coverage, nothing like that. He was he would he would go through his progression. That was another thing. As he went through his progression, nothing's there. He starts feeling it. He da- he twice. This only happened twice, but he danced outside of the pocket through on the run. It looked. I know we had the firestorm of viral tweets and all this stuff about Dylan Raiola showing up to camp looking like Patrick Mahomes and blah blah blah. He looked like Patrick Mahomes on that one, like but both times. Uh, made both the times dumping the ball off. Uh, well, one time Jamal Banks came back to him, which was another thing. It was beautiful to see. Receivers coming back and working to their quarterback to help him out. The other time was Thomas Fedoni just getting, uh, just kind of getting open, setting uh, as he kind of broke out the pocket. Thomas Fedoni literally just kind of gets into a flat and sits down, dumps the ball off. It was, it was a thing of beauty. So that that's first and foremost. Heinrich, how did Heinrich look? Um, th- he has grown. He has grown. I'm going to say that. Uh, much better passer. The thing that shows me that he's grown is he actually maneuvered in the pocket, did not dance outside. He's, he had good feet work moving in and around the tight spots in the pocket, and then he would pull the ball down. Uh, he kept his eyes downfield, so you can tell that they're really working on 
keeping your eyes downfield, which is nothing that none of the quarterbacks last year did. If they didn't see the the first receiver on the route open, they just tucked and ran. Um, and so they he he's maneuvering the pocket well. He still to me stinks at throwing the ball in the flat on a on a screen. He still th- he doesn't throw the ball with um, with touch. He throws it on a line. Um, also, that wheel route by the receiver coming out, which they run a lot. That wheel route, terrible at that too. Like he was overthrowing it. So it's still a lot of the same. Now he did have some. He did have some beautiful passes downfield. Uh, one to Malachi Coleman that was just a thing of beauty. But he is not. It's like it's not close. It's not close. Dylan Raiola and him are in a, are in different stratospheres. I think Heinrich should move into more of a um, like if they're gonna if they're gonna have Heinrich continue to play the whole quarterback game. I think he needs to be like the dude, and I cannot for the life of me think of his name. But he plays for the Saints. You'll know who I'm talking about. He he's number two quarterback, um, but he, they use him kind of as this weird tight end running back deal um gosh dang it i know his name and get the camera going and it's not there i think that's the kind of role they have to have for heinrich if they're going to sit there and play some games with him where he there's a chance he could run there's a chance he could dump it there's a chance he could throw it um but and it's more of kind of just keeping a defense honest i i I don't think anything more than that Uh, so that's what i have for heinrich carter nelson dude carter nelson ran um he wasn't out there with the ones when they would do ones at the end of practice, he did come in and run with the ones, but he was mostly with the twos. And that cat is another kid that I look at it and go, what freaking lab did they grow this kid in? I thought he would be smaller than what he is. Nah, <laughs> dude, that dude's a stud too. I watched him. I watched him block. It's a great blocker. Um, if you didn't know, they're moving him from tight end to wide receiver to kind of start him out. Um, he's got wheels. He has to just, he has a knack to get open and he does that gritty go across the middle dig routes. Uh, is not afraid to take a hit, man. I mean, he, and he was putting moves on guys like, yeah, Carter Nelson, you'll see him number 27 and he is an absolute stud as well. Like I am beyond ecstatic now. Let me pause for a second because I can hear, I can hear it. I see you guys in the comment sections. The Husker fan that is so beat down, so downtrodden, you can't get excited. You can't drink the Kool-Aid. I get it. It's okay. I'm telling you what my eyes see from last year to this year. There's a lot to be excited about. Are they going to make it to the foot to the playoff? Probably not. There's there's a lot of young guys and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, experience on the team too. But you've got a true freshman playing quarterback. You're going to have a true freshman at times at receiver. Uh, there's still growth that's got to happen. But this team is going to be dangerous. I promise you that. This offense looks so much different. And hear me. Go back and watch my live streams or go back and watch some older videos. I am a massive, massive. Um, let me say it like this. Marcus Satterfield, I was hard on last year. I thought his play calling was awful. But as I thought about it through the offseason and I watched the spring game and I watched this practice, I saw how hamstrung he was with just bad quarterback play, man. And then don't forget, you lost key receivers. You lost your two starting running backs, who, by the way, Ramir Johnson looks good, man. He, he I can't believe that he's he's already back from an ACL. And he looks good. Um, Saw some of Gabe Urban uh, a little bit, but uh, I'm Gabe Urban is just he's been hurt every year he's been here. So I'm kind of I'm kind of down on Gabe Urban, and until he shows it to me, I can't really get excited about the guy. But when it comes to Marcus Satterfield last year to this year, when when you have two key starters go down, um, key wide receivers go down. And then you've got just bad quarterback play. What are you supposed to do? <laughs> like, you can't run the ball every play. That said, I think that this offense, 
this year is going to look so much different and it's going to be again efficient because that's what it looked like out on the field it's just efficient man having a kid like dylan riola it's just going to be efficient that's the only thing i can say they're going to run the ball well they're going to pass the ball well they can they can really do everything well. And I know that sounds like I'm drinking the Kool-Aid, but I'm just showing I'm just telling you what my eyes see, what I've seen at the spring game, what I saw last night, which by the way, we weren't allowed to take video, understandably so, uh, during the team time. So I can't show you anything of what I saw, but just know they were running plays that you're gonna see. But seeing that they have an actual quarterback coach and they have um a guy who's that this the quarterback's coach, which again, his name is going out my brain. Uh, going to be the offensive passing game coordinator. Man, it, it just looks better. It looks better. Tight ends look better. Marcus Satterfield is actually coaching the area that he's best at. So let me keep going because I got a lot of notes and I'm 16 minutes into this bad boy. Um, Quentin Ives, I see why they like him. I hope this year we see him. That dude's a tough runner. We talk about Gabe Irvin being a tough runner. Quentin Ives is a tough runner, man. That dude was just getting nasty two three four yards and where there was nothing there to get and he's just like popping it up the gut man popping it up the gut tyler knack got into a very heated like it, it caused there was a, a a scuffle that broke out between him and jameson williams the defensive end and so ultimately because of that and because of uh some guys kind of walking and not jogging it was pretty awesome. Coach Rule gets on the mic and he's like, "Hey, so guess what? We get to run for you guys and show you how great, uh, how good a shape we are." And so, man, he made him run multiple times. And coaches, which Matt Rule will say, not all coaches because he didn't run, but all the coaches for every every uh, position also had to run. Man, they ran some gassers and then got back into got back into it. So that was really cool. Accountability, accountability. I already talked about Daniel Kalen. I, I see that he's – my note here is that he's really grown since just the spring game. You see it. You see his arm strength too. Uh, he's got he got a lot more zip on the ball, but he's still learning to read defenses and those types of things. Um, Maverick Newton. So I had to look up. I'm like, who is this number 54 that is just taking it to in, in individuals or, uh, when they were going one-on-one uh, -on -one, Offensive line versus defensive line. I'm like, who is this dude that is just giving tackles fits? I mean, just bull rushes and and counter moves and stiff arm, like and then the the, the whole pull and rip. I mean, he's got it. He's he's got a little bag that's working. And I know Maverick Nuna got hurt last year, so this will be his sophomore year. He probably redshirted essentially because he got hurt. But I'm. I was just really impressed with Maverick Newton and excited to see him uh, this year. So I said that there's a running back we didn't see in the spring that we're going to see now that just kept every time I looked up, dude was just scoring. Makai Nelson, who they got from Connecticut, freshman. He's going to be special. Spe Mark this down right now. Earmark it. 18 and a half minutes in to this episode, Oscar Central. He's going to be special, man. Uh, I'm excited to see him. He will not start. Emmett Johnson will start, which Emmett Johnson still looks good. Hear me. He deserves to be the starter. Uh, Makai Nelson takes it outside, makes guys miss, takes that screen pass, makes guys miss. But I watched him hit it up the gut two or three times and just bust it. Where it looked like there was nothing there, all of a sudden he pokes out. He gets. 10, 11 yards, and then on one, he got about 25 yards for a touchdown. Makai Nelson, just absolutely, I loved watching that dude work. Um, I talked about, I said that there's, I, it shouldn't be Heinrich Harburg as the number two. Jalen Gramstad, the transfer from the NI, from uh, Iowa, Iowa Western NAI school. I wasn't sure what to think, and I wasn't sure how big he would be. He's actually decently much bigger than I thought, than what you could tell in, in pictures online. That guy looks like he deserves to be out there. He doesn't look like he was playing on an on, on NAIA team. Uh, there's a reason why he was, of course, the NAIA Player of the Year and uh, led his team to a national championship. Accurate as all get out. Does he have the zip that Dylan does? No. Does he have, like, is it effortless like Dylan? No. 
but he is accurate. Maneuvers the pocket really well. Reads defenses. Communicates well. Um, you just wa- like I just watched him, and I was like, that dude has played a lot of football. He should be the number two. Number 19, uh, that's his number. If you're wondering when you go out, you know, if when you're looking at the sideline or whatever, number 19, Jalen Gramstad. Liked him. Liked him a lot. I really think he should be the number two guy. Um, Roger Gradney went down with a, some sort of injury. He was carted off the field. It was really sad. Uh, Prince Will is my favorite defender, and I was looking for him the entire time going, where the heck is Prince Will? He was on the sideline. They say it's nothing major. Him and Jalen Lloyd both rode the bike the entire time in the yellow jerseys. So I was really sad because I wanted to see him work. Okay. Um, To end the game, to end the game was something really hilarious. Coach said, all right, they get three gassers, defense, offense, both get, they get three gassers, but we're going to see who can field punts. And for every punt that's fielded, uh, a, a gasser goes the way. So, Defense went first, and he calls out Nash Hutmacher to come out and field a punt, and Nash missed it. And you see everybody on the defensive line, like they just hold it. It was it was so funny. Then he calls out Bryce Benhart from the offensive line, and Bryce caught it. So there went one off the off the board. And then Jamari Butler, he called out for the defense, and he missed one. And then he called out Tyler Knack because of his fight that he had earlier. He called him out, and uh, he Tyler Knack misses it. So then he says, "All right, we're going to call out coaches." Coach Knighton comes out. And apparently Coach Knighton was a receiver in high school, was not did not play defensive line. He was a receiver in high school. And uh, Coach Knighton goes out there, and he misses it. And then EJ, Coach EJ Barthel, who coaches uh, running backs, literally sprints out. It's out there, and he catches it. Um, and then all the defensive players were begging for a redo. And uh, so he calls out brand new coach who just started this week, uh, who's going to be a, uh, an assistant coach, Rashawn Melvin, who just came out of retirement or just retired from the NFL. He's like, all right, coach, you just came out of the NFL. You should be able to do this. And I believe he was a defensive back. Uh, Rashawn Melvin comes out. They boot punters booted up way up in the air. And Rashawn bobbles it and then catches it. And then everybody goes nuts. And so they, they only had to run one gasser. Um, so yeah, there's that. So, all right. For all you pessimistic Husker fans, you might be asking, okay, well, everything sounds like rainbows and unicorns, and we're going to be amazing going to the national championship again. I'm not saying that. I think this year this team goes at best 10-2, and which puts them in the playoff, I would imagine. At the very least, nine wins. I think they do nine wins this year, which is four wins. This team can do it knowing the leadership that's on the defense, knowing all of the players you have returning in the trenches specifically, you've got a lot, a lot of leadership. And I think it's going to show up um, on the field. Um, Having uh, Isaac Gifford in the backfield, also Deshaun Singleton is back. Um, Praise be to Jesus. It's good to see those two guys back there. If you're wondering who's starting opposite Tommy Hill, which by the way, Tommy Hill was not out there. He was in plain clothes. And from, from what I'm, what I think I believe I heard that it's just kind of like they 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 were holding him out, not because of anything of injury or anything like that. Uh, so it was Marquise Buford Jr. playing starting corner. And then opposite of him was Jeremiah Charles, who, by the way, he, he's small as far as like his build. He's tall, but he's small as far as his build. But that dude locked down. Like I watched him lock down uh, Jamal Banks on a, on a route. I watched him lock down Thomas Fedoni on a route. I watched him lock down Isaiah Nayor on a, on a route. Like he, I, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. So again, going back to the pessimistic guy, well, it's all rainbows and, and unicorns, and no, it's not. Because here's the thing: Tristan Albano, um, I am nervous about him, and I think I didn't look it up. Nico, I think, is the other kicker, the new, the new uh, freshman kicker. Um, Nico hit all of them, all of them. I say when I believe it was like 45 yards, Nico hit all of them. Tristan Albano missed two, I think is in my notes. Tristan Albano makes me nervous. Also, Brian Buscini was not good in special teams practice. Like they were, they were having a punt and it was not good. The, the other punter, the freshman punter, 
that they got did better. He didn't blow my doors off, but he did better. Like there was one punt by Brian Buscini that was just awful. Just like last year, if you recall in the Colorado game, there was like a 15 yard, 10 to 15 yard punt that he had. It was kind of the same thing right off his foot flopped. And it's like, there's no pressure there. So Tristan Alvano, Brian Buscini are the two things that still worry me, but there are two guys on, on the team that I think can come in and, and, and be serviceable. And I, I'm, I, I'm excited about Nico. Um, because I, he just was, he was, it was effortless. Like he had some, he has some leg to him. Like Tristan has leg, but it's not accurate at times. This kid, every one of them straight through, boom, 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 boom. So that gives me some relief. So that's that. If you were at the big red preview as well, would you do me a favor? Would you, if you liked it, would you like this video? Would you consider sharing? Would you consider sharing with others? Um, but if you were there, would you comment down below? Say, Hey, I was there, man. Um, Tell me what you thought of the Big Red preview. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for viewing this video. I hope you got you excited for the season. Either this later this week or next week. Next week for sure, if I don't get it in this week, I'm going to be breaking down UTEP, which I'm excited to kind of talk about. So with that being said, thanks so much for viewing this. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me. See ya.